the director of career tech presentations for Moore Public Schools, and all I can say, this has been a long time coming, and I, for one, am so excited to be here today to celebrate this unbelievable accomplishment. Aurora Public Schools has responded to the need in our community and our district for a program specifically dealing with aviation fabrication and assembly. No such program existed in the state of Florida. So we worked with our industry partners and Bill McGinnish, our instructor, to write and submit a new program to the DOE for approval. This has truly been a team effort. Teamwork can be defined as a collaborative e effort of a group to achieve a common purpose or goal work done by several associates, each doing a part. Many of you here today are here today because you played a significant role in the fruition of this aviation fabrication and assembly program and facility. It would have not been possible without you. Our legislators, our school board members, our superintendent, our senior staff, O'Galley High School's administrative team and our teacher, our district facilities and maintenance staff, the Economic Development Commission, Career Source, and our business partners. We came together with a goal. The goal can be defined as an idea of the future or des desired result that a person or group of people envisions, plans, and commits to achieve. Our goal design and build a program to serve our students and our business community by providing students knowledge and skills that could be used to further their education or directly enter the workforce. I think you'll all agree with me that today we celebrate the accomplishment of that goal. While I have a captive audience, I have to make sure that I do my commercial and make sure that you all know that in Brevard County we have 42 different CTE programs offered in 15 of our high schools throughout the district. Eight of these programs are offered right here at Valley High School. While you're here today, you are welcome to visit these other outstanding programs. Our teachers are here. They will take you and show the programs that we have. Also over um, by the booth, there is a brochure that looks like this for your information, and it lists all of our high schools and all the programs we have. I just want to make sure that you know that and that's your message you leave here with today. We have plenty of CTE programs. At this time, I'd like to introduce the CTE staff. Vicki Huffman, Jim Johnson, Michelle Thomas, Jenny King, Regina Johnson, and Vonda Hayes.
thinking we can all have an extra cookie because we all lost a pound or two. <laughs> that was kind of planned a little bit. Um, I just want to clear something up um, in case you hear about other aviation programs in the state of Florida, because there are. There are aeronautics programs, there are um, programs that deal with airframe and power plant, there are uh, uh, programs that deal with other aspects of airplanes. But the program we have here is unique because it's the first a um, aviation fabrication and assembly program. It makes it uh, very unique in that way. And with the help of Bill McGinnis, we submitted the, uh, the uh, curriculum to the state and had it approved. So it's a very unique program in that way. The aviation fabrication and assembly program is actually beginning its fourth year at Galley High School. And for the past three years, students have met in a locker room. Any of you students have been here for two or three years? <laughs> um, that was converted to a temporary classroom and lab. The students worked on aircraft in a fenced in area. Where was that? Right here, outside, with a fence around it. So to say that there was a lot of bumping elbows is, a, is an understatement. We're so grateful to so many of you that have helped us every step of the way to see this day finally come. So I want to introduce um, Angelique Rinaldi, who is a legislative assistant for Senator Darby Huckel. Um, she had a prior commitment today and could not attend, but she was one of the senators who approved our legislative appropriation for much of the equipment in this state. Angelique? Thank you, guys. Um, it's truly an honor and privilege to be here today on behalf of Senator Hugel. Senator Hugel would like to thank each and every individual and entity that came together to help make this dream a reality for the students of O'Galley High School's aviation program. Today bears testament to the power of community collaboration toward a common cause. We have had the opportunity to personally meet Mr. McInnish and his students at the last two Maiden Brevard Expos, um, and I've never met an individual more passionate about this program and the success of his students than Mr. McInnish. So thank you, Mr. McInnish, and thank you to the students for their fundraising efforts. Thank you to DC, matching funds for that, and thank you again to every individual and entity um, that were involved to help make this possible. Uh, this program is just one of many examples of how vocational curriculum can inspire and prepare and equip our students with the skills they need for entry into our local workforce. Um, so we have heard such inspiring stories from these students and it's our hope that we continue to see the success of this program and others like it. Thank you. Um, next we have, we want to thank uh, Commissioner Kurt Smith and I actually met Commissioner Smith this morning on my way to work, he was standing on the corner of Tainita, and I waved, and I waved and said, I'll see you later, sir. <laughs> I want to thank you for having me here. I think this is a big, big deal. Uh, I'm a big advocate for vocational training. Uh, my own brother, um, of course, I went to school about 150 years ago. But back then, they didn't know what this dyslexic was. They just thought my brother was a, a, a slow learner. But he was very, very good with his hands. And they opened up a vocational school in my little town, and they taught people how to do glass blowing. And he learned to become a glass blower. And he made a lot of money, and he didn't have to go to college, and he was very good with his hands. So I think an awful lot of kids get left out without vocational programs. So I'm extremely happy to see vocational training becoming more important in Brevard County. I can tell you one little uh, side note. When I opened my business, which was uh, Mako Auto Painting, way back in 1987, uh, I had my pickup kids that came in and wanted to work with their hands. And probably within about 15 years, that dried up. And that corresponded with the, the vocational training in the schools drying up. And I thought, how tragic, because we have all these kids graduating from high school now that really are very talented but it's with their hands, and they were getting left out. So I'm extremely, extremely happy to see this happening, and of course, this is a, just a big, big deal, and I don't think you can even measure it. So thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. We also received this plaque today in the Galley High School. Um, they're going to 
be taking a, a new exam, well, it's new for us in the state, the aerospace aircraft um, assembly exam. And so this is the first high school in the state that will be taking this exam. So it's a wonderful accomplishment already at the beginning of the program. As a teacher, I, I hate to read and I never used to read, but I'm going to read through my script because what I want to do now is just introduce a number of people and groups of people and just say a few words about each one of them and how they contributed to this. And then we're going to um, have a few comments from uh, Mr. Susan and from Linda Weatherman and uh, Jeremy Solomon and a few people like that. So we really want to appreciate our school board members. Um, we appreciate your support and, and funding for this and, and being with us every step of the way. So Matt Susan and Tina Vestavich are here on the school board. Our new superintendent, Dr. Mark Mullins, is here. <laughs> Stephanie Sullivan is our assistant superintendent for secondary <laughs> Some of the directors that work with her are here. Robin Novelli is here. Yes, in the back. And Molly Vega and Sherry Bowman is right there. Cindy Van Meter is a very special guest. So she came out of retirement. She was our previous associate superintendent for curriculum instruction. And Cindy provided support at the initiation of this project that was just an idea before anything else was happening. So we appreciate your support in the past and thank you so much for coming today. <laughs> Mr. Dane Theodore in the corner up here is our retiring associate superintendent for facilities. Dane was instrumental in providing funding for this building and was the project manager actually at the initiation of the project. And we would not be here today without his assistance and support. So thank you. <laughs> Sue Han. Right there. Sue also, and Sue is our incoming associate superintendent for facilities. Um, Sue was directly involved in all of the initial planning the meetings, and she provided leadership and oversight for all aspects of planning and construction of this new building. Thank you, Sue, for coming here. <laughs> Dave Martin. Right here, Dave Martin. In the middle over there. Dave Martin was the project manor, manager who works for our facilities office for this building. Uh, he kept everything rolling. Dave knows his stuff, and some things I really like about him, one of the main things is that he has common sense and that he provides outstanding customer service. And working with him as a co-employee, I felt like I was his client more than a co-employee. And he definitely knows how to get things done. So thank you, Dave, for your <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy uh, Solomon, the principal of Bogali High School. No new CTE program can be initiated without the full support of the principal. Jeremy was in since the inception of the program about four years ago. Our previous, previous superintendent, Dr. Bingley, um, inquired about an aviation-related program in vicinity of the Melbourne Airport. At that point, Jeremy was on board immediately, no pun intended. And at that point, the vision was a bit blurry, but the commitment from the school, the district, and many of you, and finding an, an outstanding instructor, things began to get clearer. And here we are, just four years later. So thank you, Jeremy for all of your support, and from the other O'Galley administrators. Is Ron Dedman here? Right there. In the back, Ron Dedman and Chris Hinkle. Chris here? OK, John, John and Heather, they're gone. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. <laughs> Janice Schultz already started everything off. But I have to say, I love Janice, and I love working for Janice. She, she's my director. Um, Janice is very focused and detail-oriented, and she led us in making this vision a reality. Uh, we hit a few brick walls, but she always found the door, and when the door closed, she found the window to keep things moving along and this project moving forward. And her signature is on every single purchase order for every single thing in this facility, so she bought it, I think, here. <laughs> we appreciate your guidance, Janice, and tenacity to get things done professionally, quickly, and Raise your hand and Vonda, where's Vonda? Vonda 
hate is in the Stand back. up, Vonda. Vonda and Regina work in the Career and Tech Ed office, and they keep everything rolling and keep us all in shape. They, um, they work diligently behind the scenes for all of our CPE programs, and they complete all the paperwork that makes everything happen and cut through red tape at times. They rarely get to actually see the fruit of their labor, so I'm really glad that we're able to come today. Thank you. Bill is a godsend. <laughs> really. Really. Okay. Janet, could you start? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, a program like this would fail without an extremely dedicated and knowledgeable instructor. We can have all the bits and pieces, but it would just fall apart without leadership and good teaching and someone who is knowledgeable. Bill, thank you for your 22 years of Coast Guard service. After that, Bill taught middle school in Alabama for 17 years. Um, Bill is the person who breathed life into this space that's filled with so many cool things. Thank you, Bill, for beginning your third or fourth career at the Bar Public Schools. <laughs> we have uh, Rare represented here. Phil Crawl and uh, Steve Moldrum is here. Steve, please go someplace. Okay, and Nelson. 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 Um, and Breyer was also there at the beginning. On May 13, 2015, they hosted an information night for potential new students and their parents. We met at Embraer. There were about 40 people that came. And after touring the assembly area and the printing areas, we went back to a conference room for pizza and a presentation about what Embraer is about and also aviation-related careers. That event provided the initial spark for the students and the parents. They also encouraged, and Breyer also encouraged the students by saying that even though we can't guarantee a job to any of you, we will guarantee that you'll have an interview if you successfully complete, complete this high school program. During the past few summers, Embraer has provided internships for eight students and has hired three graduates already. So thank you very much. tours of their facility and assist in welding and continue to do that with new students. They've been a source of knowledge and expertise for Bill and his students, and they're passionate about teaching practical and technical skills to students. And these are the kind of students they want to see that are successful in high school, so when they get out into the real world, they know what a screwdriver is. <laughs> Thank you, Chris and Elaine. Career source of our glory. I guess are you the only one here from Career Source? Um, and my colleague um, John Perkins over yes. there. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, four years ago, Career Source uh, provided expert assistance in writing our initial proposal for a legislative appropriation for this program and for the machining program at Bayside High School. It was a three-week turnaround. It was during our Christmas vacation, and Janice was in the office. Tom, you brought Tom as Janice's husband. I uh, remember that, um, and we were awarded five hundred thousand dollars for both programs. But it was the initiation through Career Source for Bard that really got the ball rolling and pointed us in the right direction. Thank you very much. <laughs> Linda Weatherman is president of the Economic uh, Development Commission of, of Florida Space Coast. Thank you for being here, Linda. The EDC provided a generous grant to the program that actually paid for the disassembly and transportation of the jet out in the hangar, a good portion of that, and also paid for lots and lots of tools and equipment. And they're a continual supporter of the program. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the building wouldn't be here today without the construction company and, and the architect. Heard Construction Company. Um, Sam Heard is here. Uh, is Harry here? Uh, Brianna is here, Vice President. Randy Bronson was the project manager. And anyone else from her? Pat 
Dan Andy Day, for president. Adam, Adam Day, sorry. Um, you're all very easy to work with, very easy to work with, and we appreciate your attention to detail and completing this project in four months, from groundbreaking until students were almost inside the building. Thank you very much. Outstanding job of customer service and working with us as, as clients. And I've never been involved in a project like this where it was, it was so um, hands on and really looking at all the bits and pieces of everything and how it would fit together. So, thank you very much for your design and for coming today. <laughs> Our flying fish aircraft parts. Is anyone here from Flying Fish? They've been a great source for uh, Mr. McGinnis and his students and providing all kinds of bits and pieces and parts. Fallon Aviation, anyone here from Fallon? The same also, providing all kinds of um, donations. And then we also have uh, Walter Hewitt, who's here from Valkyria Aircraft Association. Walter? Experimental the, aircraft. Uh, experimental, thank you for coming and for your support of the program also. Um, is George Porcella here, Chief Inspector? Chief Inspector from FAA Coordination, Norfolk Brumming Corporation. Thank you for your support of the program. I appreciate it. And uh, Kyle Smith is not here from the air show. I don't think so. Okay, last but not least, uh, Cliff Graham, can you come up please? Melbourne Airport's Clifford Graham received the state of Florida's highest aviation industry recognition, uh, Aviation Professional of the Year. The award was presented at a recent Florida's development of transportation ceremony in Tampa. Um, where did you go to high school? Ogallee High School. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, it's a real honor and uh, privilege to be here. Uh, I can tell you, this is probably the first time I've been right here since 1989. I spent a lot of time, I think this was the old uh, wood shop back then. Yeah. That's the parking lot. Okay. This is the parking lot. But anyway, um, from the airport's perspective, we couldn't be more proud and more, because we want to support this program. We're only a mile down the road. Uh, the great tenants that we talked about here today, uh, Embraer, Northrop Grumman, and so many more, um, we work with on a daily basis. And to think that you know students like you guys have such a great opportunity to uh, go to school here and learn these lessons and go right to work or maybe maybe go see Jerry at Eastern Florida State College uh, and, and do a couple more years. But uh, just couldn't be more proud to be here. Uh, I did bring a little gift uh, to give to the program today. This is a lithograph from the U.S. Thunderbirds that was given to me at one of the air shows. And I wanted to leave it here with, with the program. And um, it, it's a new building. I thought maybe we could use some new art. <laughs> has donated a lot of aircraft, major aircraft components like wings and tails and bodies that the kids have worked on over the last several years. Nice. I won't take a second. Um, I, I just wanted to say how proud and honored I am to stand up here. I was a teacher here at O'Galley five, six years ago. And this is the parking lot that I used to slide into when I was running a little bit later than the teacher should be because it gave us access to the other part of the school. But to say that as I was knocking on doors all through Zora Park and all through the different places to find out what the community needed more than anything, everybody was saying trades, trades, trades. And when you sit there and you look back at what you can create, the aviation program here at O'Galley leads the state not only for career and technical, but it's actually set up the way that a career and technical program should be. You have actual kids graduating and going into industry. Throughout the end, you will hear people talk around the state about how great their career and technical programs are. They don't have the connection that they need to for the pipeline and talent into industry, and that's where we lack across the state, but that's not what Janice Schultz, who's in her 45th year, I want everybody to know. She's amazing. <laughs> Our 
All right, and that's why I want Bill McGinnis, who every time I bring him to Tallahassee, he brings a copy of all the stuff he needs at that time, and it changes all the time. So we're riding up, I'm like, Bill, what do you got there? He's like, oh, I need a, I need a toolbox. I got this $9,000 toolbox. So we'll be in Huckel's office, and he's handing down stuff. Don't ever have your wallet on you when you meet with <laughs> Honestly, I'm a small fraction of the entire scope of this entire thing, and I am just so honored to be up in front of you and have the opportunity as a former teacher, as a school board member, as a former son of a contractor who loves the trades, and um, I just want to say thank you for everything, and, and, and don't stop here. We need to put Embraer on the top of this building. We need you guys to pay for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also need some of the other parts. I know, Larson, you gave how many engines did you give? Three? And he came here and welded the things. That's what we need to build the community. All right? Rush construction. I know Randy thought that I was kind of weird. I kept popping up here every once in a while looking at the building because I was so excited. And he caught me one time and asked me what I was doing. So that's what it takes to have a community. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. privilege of leading the Commodores for seven years now. When I first arrived, I quickly realized what a special place Ogallee was, for many reasons. The strong community ties, the culture on campus, and the supporting faculty and staff that we have that go beyond the call of duty to assure the success of every student. I was simply blown away by this. When the opportunity presented itself to add an aviation program to our school's offering, I jumped at the chance. After living on the Space Coast for 30 years and seeing the rebirth of our aerospace industry in our county, I knew that O'Galley needed to be a part of this innovative program opportunity. Uh, with the addition of this aviation program, we now offer an excellent career and technical opportunity for land, sea, and air with our automotive, marine, and aviation program. I don't know of any other program in the state that has that kind of a combination. I want to thank all those involved in helping make this to help me take this program from an idea four years ago to this amazing facility today. Many of the key players have already been mentioned, but I'd like to personally thank our legislation for the funding support. Our past and current superintendents for seeing the value this program brings to our students and to the community. And to Mr. Matt Susan and all the school board members for supporting this project in countless ways. I also want to thank Janice Schultz and Dennis Sobolewski for their ability to work through all the challenges that presented themselves along the journey to today. Your, your support just means so much to us. I also want to uh, thank all the contractors that helped to build the building along the way in just four months. When we first met, <clears throat> the very first meeting, I was a little nervous about it. I, we hadn't taken our project like this in a while. And uh, um, Henry Earl, Harry Earl turned to me and said, Jeremy, you don't have anything to worry about. You have the A team here, and we're going to build you, build you an amazing hangar. And they did. Absolutely did. Thank you so much. Finally, I want to thank Mr. McKinnish for taking a leap of faith when, when he came on board to take on this program. We all know people that we have worked with that simply excel in their positions. For us, Mr. McKinnish is the right person that came to us at the right moment in time to fill the position that seemed he was tailor-made for. I've worked with many teachers over the past 28 years here in Brevard County, and I've never had the privilege to work with someone that supports students, builds community relationships, and brings more support to their program better than Bill. He doesn't know a stranger, and he's not afraid to ask anyone how they can support our aviation program. You are absolutely right about hiding that wall. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't have an exact figure, but I know that over the past four years, he has brought in literally hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of donations and material, labor, and supplies for O'Galley High School. Mr. McKinnis, your efforts are recognized and appreciated by the hundred plus students you serve from our school and beyond and our community as well. In closing, I'd just like to say, but as eager as I was to see this program take flight, I'm even more excited to see where we'll go from here. Thank you very much.
work and have to have a strong uh, partnership between the schools, industry, and economic development. And I will tell you, we're so proud to be part of this partnership. Uh, when I met Matt Susan, who's currently chair of our Certified Protection Technician program, the EDC, we'll show you there's a connection there, that I, I need you to meet a fellow, a, a fellow Bill English from working, and he came into my office. And within 10 minutes, I thought, oh my God, what a treasure. What a treasure we have in this community. And I was ready to do a car wash. I was like, oh, we need more drinks or something. I don't care. I'm here to help. So we are so lucky. What a wonderful asset. Thank you so much. Matt, thank you so much. We're very pleased. Uh, Brenda Pacholi, I can say it right. Let me tell you, when you have some limited amount of funds, uh, as everything in life, you have a lot more requests. And it was Brenda who came into my office saying, this is something we really have to do. And she managed this project. And I'm glad to see we had it. You know, we talked about we had enough money to disassemble the plane, and I guess we had enough money to put it back together, so I'm lucky we're happy about that. <laughs> okay, sure, we get that. So, Brenda, thank you for finding this. She's constantly getting the request. And for our wonderful staff, I'm lucky. Uh, the number one qualifier of our company looking to invest, and we deal with the company, we're the lead agency that deals with all these companies from Northrop Grumman to Harris, when they want to expand or relocate, or maybe not, go, you know, go somewhere else. The number one, while well, incentives get all the attraction, is the availability of a qualified labor force. And you're part of it. We are gonna be so lucky. I mean, our, our future's bright. Thank you, kids. Thank you. <laughs> Twin engine jet out there is a story in itself. It was donated from, uh, is it a chiropractor? 1 800 ass gear. Yeah, right. And that's why it was a <laughs> So it was donated from Tampa, so the condition was that we get it here. So Bill said we have a plane that's free, but it's going to cost $16,000 to take it apart and get it here. So anyway, EDC paid for a good portion of that. It was taken apart, brought back here. The wings were sitting on the floor a week and a half ago. Bill's brother, um, Alan. Pardon me? Alan. Alan, Connecticut right now. He is he is like Bill on steroids here, sir. A and P mechanic. So he called up his brother and said, "Can you come help me put a plane together?" So last week they spent three days at least putting the wings on. How much do those wings weigh? About fifteen hundred pounds. Yeah. So two old guys put it together. <laughs> get it done. So that's the commitment that we had from Bill. Do you, you want to say anything? Sure. I got one. I don't have a script. <laughs> this is not the end of something. This is the beginning. Yes. This is the start. I don't have to say what I've done or what has happened more than to say, if the Lord's in something, he'll bless it. Well, folks, this has been blessed. And here's the proof of it. It isn't the equipment in the hangar. It isn't the tools in the toolbox. It isn't the nice, beautiful boards and all that. It's these guys. It's the product. It's what comes out of here. I have kids that are... Everything from Embraer, Piper, I've got kids in uh, colleges from FIT all the way out to the University of Texas doing aviation engineering. I've got kids in the military. One of my young ladies, so excited. we got some Army guys here. Where are they at? Are they in here right now? I guess they left already. But our Army guys come in and says, your girl, she starts next week. She's going to be on Apache helicopters working on Apache starting next week. So that's what's coming out of here. Kids are leaving here and getting jobs. Look, kids are leaving here and they're going to college for engineering. Right now, Grumman's saying that they need 1,500 engineers over the next five years. Well, guess what? Perfect timing. Kids coming out of here, they go over to FIT, guess where they can go? They don't have to go to another state. We have work right here in this state for them. Our job is to provide our customers, which are our manufacturers, our builders, and our space center with qualified, safe, entry-level technicians. And that's what we're going to do. Thank you.
briefly? No? I, would. I think the air conditioner went off, too. Um, I'm one of the graduating students from Mr. McKenna's class, and I got a job directly out of high school at Piper Aviation as an aircraft assembler because of what he did for me. I'm extremely grateful to every single one of you that has helped get this program started. Once we got a started in the, um, the football class, to see this hangar after graduating is <laughs> so amazing. And I'm just so grateful to all of you, and thank you so much. I'm also one of the first year classes from uh, Mr. McKenna's class. Um, it is so nice to see all the people who have worked behind the scenes and the people who have worked on camera as well. From, uh, in four years, I never thought this would get to this point, but I, I would like to thank each and every one of you for working on this program, not because of me, because I already graduated and I didn't have the chance of using it. <laughs> <laughs> for all of the kids that are going to be playing starting now, all these 120 kids Mr. Mag has right now, it was something like that and all the future generations of this program, they all, they all, all this education that we're getting, all the opportunities, all the colleges, the work starting uh, right after, after high school, they all everything to you guys, and thank you for everything you have done so far. donated by one of our aircraft manufacturers, came off of a Predator drone, and it has the names of the 16 first kids in the program. Oh. We'll shellac that. Up here. Okay. Yeah. 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 Are students going to be out in different areas now? Yes. So. Oh, our students will be going out to the different work areas. Please take a second to go talk to him about some of the things they Hang on, Dane wanted to say something. Yeah, he did. Dane, come on. Dane's retiring in his We want to let him speak as much as possible before he's done. It's, it's tough to follow these kids. You know, it's hot in here because we turn the air off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I would have known, I would have told him to keep it up. Uh, I, I am retiring, so I don't have to be nice to the board members <laughs> But Matt Susan came up here and said he played a very small part in this. It, it takes a team, it takes community to do what we've done here. But it takes money. It takes that grant to get the equipment. And more importantly, or as importantly, it takes the money to build the building. And there are a lot of programs that uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Sullivan asks for mm -hmm. that can't go forward because we don't have the facilities money, that, that capital, to build the facilities part of it. In this particular case, the board members were, were wise enough a couple of years ago to provide the money for programs, and this is the result of them approving two years ago program-related money. So I want to thank both Ms. Deskovich and Mr. Susan for providing the money to build this building. tried to save $16,000 too. When Bill told me the plane had to be disassembled, I said, does it fly? And he said, yeah. yeah. And I said, can you fly it like under the radar at nighttime? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the parking lot was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? 